everyone, welcome back to our Summer Sunday series. Today we're thinking about what is in our hands in terms of our possessions and the things that God has given us. I'm stood in my slightly windy garden and I'm looking at my house which I am unbelievably grateful to God for. This house keeps us safe and warm. Within this house we can eat together and feast together, we can cry together, we can laugh together. Within this house we can rest together. Within this house I can invite others into my house to seat them around the table and share not only food but company and Christian friendship and non-Christian friendship and everything in between. I am so grateful to God for the possessions and the things that he gives me. As I look in my hands, I am grateful for all of the things that he gives me, even through to the hose pipe that I'm sat looking at that can water my plants so that I can grow tomatoes, which brings me great joy. There's nothing like eating a tomato that you've grown yourselves. What is in your hands? What physical things has God given you? Some of us watching this might go, well, I haven't got much. I don't own a house like you, Claire. I can't even think about how I could do that. But the Bible, as we're about to see, talks about whatever we have, whatever we have physically, can turn into something amazing when we offer it to God. And so we're going to use uh, the story of a widow and a couple of coins to help us think through this today. You're going to need your Bible and you're going to need a piece of paper and a pen because we're effectively going to be doing SOAP, the way of reading Bible that we use a lot at church. Thinking about which scripture God has got for us, what we're observing about that, how we're going to apply that to our lives and turning that into prayer. S-O-A-P, scripture, observation, application and prayer. So. Grab your Bibles and let's find Mark chapter 12, verse 41. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. And I'm going to read it to us right now. And as I do, why don't you just underline or make a note of a word or a phrase or a verse or a concept that catches your attention. That you think, do you know what, God might be speaking to me about that. So as I read this, why don't you write that down? Mark 12, verse 41 onwards. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Let's pause for a moment. Maybe you just want to look back over that passage in your Bible. What verse, what word, what concept stood out for you? You need to write it down now. Just write out that verse or that concept on your piece of paper. For me, the bit that jumped out at that point was the bit that the widow gave her coins She gave everything she had. There were lots of people around her, and it says, I love it, throwing their great wealth into the treasury. But she came quietly and gently and put her coins in. That verse jumped out to me. The next part of soap, though, is to to observe it. What is is being said here? What is um, God saying in this to you? Why did it jump out? What, why, what was it that caught your attention? In a moment, I'm going to give you a chance to write that down as well. But for me, I think the reason that the uh, part about the widow and the others uh, caught my attention is often I compare myself to other people. That I 
would look at the rich people throwing money in and think, oh, that's what I should do too. Or I'd put my pinky in and then go, oh, but it's not enough God. I was observing that that's something in me that isn't what God says. <laughs> he doesn't say that those who gave the richest things were more blessed or more humble or more able or more um, sacrificial than the widow. I need to stop comparing myself to others. That's my observation. What is yours? I'm hoping you've had a chance now to write down your observation. The A of SOAP is about application. What are you going to do out of what God has said? It can be simply something like, I'm going to pray about that. Or it could be that God is asking you to do something out of that. So let's pause again, allowing God to give us some application to what he's saying to us. For me, I need to stop comparing myself to other people. Oh, they've got a nicer car or a bigger table or, oh, the paint's falling off my house or whatever it is that I compare myself to. God's speaking to me right now about making sure I live in a grateful space of what I have, not what I don't. Before we rush on, though, to the final part of our soap, the prayer bit, but a few other questions for us to think about out of this passage and thinking about the fact that we uh, observe uh, what we're observing in this passage. My first question is, what is God saying to you about what you own? He's put things in your hands. He's put things in uh, your house. He's given you possessions. He's put things in your bank account. What, what is he saying to you? about how you use it. Because this passage reminds us that a few copper coins was all that was needed for Jesus to teach his disciples about giving. And the willingness of the widow's heart was all that God wanted. What is God saying to you about what you own? And secondly, what is God saying to you about your money? We can't escape that this passage is about our money. Some of us have more than others. That's not what God sees. God sees a cheerful and thankful and generous heart, however much you have to give. So perhaps over this summer week, it's an opportunity for you with God and perhaps the others who are involved in your finances to sit and say, God, just speak to me about how I use my money this week. Speak to me how I'm going to use my money into the coming months. I know money's tight for so many of us at the moment and often we worry about that, we feel fearful of the rising costs. But let's seek God about how we use our money, not just for tithing to give away, but how we use it for our family, how we use it to feed others, how we use it uh, well for his kingdom. And the last question I have for you is an encouraging one I'm hoping. I love the last part of what Jesus said to his disciples. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than any others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. What encouragement has Jesus got for you today about the way that you use what he's given you, about the way you use your home, or the way you use your money, or the way that you use the possessions that he has given you. What encouragement has Jesus got for you today? He encouraged the widow for having the right heart. Is Jesus encouraging you today because you've got the right heart to the possessions that you have? Let's pause once again and listen to God's encouragement just for a moment. So, how do you use what's in your hands for God? How do you use the possessions and the things he's given you? My encouragement to you now is to take a few moments to write a prayer that encapsulates something of what God's been saying to you through this amazing story of the widow. And perhaps it's a commitment prayer of how you're going to use your possessions, the things that God has given you, your money, 
into the future and into this week. So let's pause again. And you can either just skip me and I'll pray in a moment, or you can come back to that and, and write your prayer at some other point. But don't rush in to this week without committing all that God's been saying to you in prayer. Let's pray together then. Lord, thank you for the example of the widow. Thank you for your encouragement to her, which is an encouragement to us. Help us to give with thankful hearts. Help us to be aware of the many things you have given us and teach us to use them well for your glory, but also for the sake of your kingdom and others. Help me this week to process these questions and the things you've been speaking to me. As the summer rolls on, help me to think about how I use what you've placed in my hands well into the coming term. In Jesus' name, Amen.